In this video, we'll look at an example that uses a cursor to manage a result set from a query. So in this program, when we choose find, we're in a construct statement, and the construct block is allowing the user to create the where clause that's going to get passed to the database. So when I choose OK, I see that there's 13 rows found. So I have a result set that's been created on the database server side uh, that will allow me to now navigate through uh, that result set using a cursor in the program. So as I go next, I can browse through the rows. I can also go previous. So right now I am browsing through that result set by fetching a row at a time and displaying it to my form. Let's take a look at the code that is used to implement this. Let's first look at the main block. We see in the main we have a connection to the database. And when we the user chooses the find action, we can see that we call a query cust function. If we look over in the code structure, we can pull up the query cust function. And it's in our other module, Cust Query 4GL, but we can see here that we go into the construct. And after we've confirmed that there is some rows to, to get, we go ahead and call something called Cust Select. And this function passes in the where clause. Now, when we look at the Cust Select function, we can see that this is the function where we are declaring the cursor. Here we're declaring a cursor called CustCurse. It's going to be a scroll cursor, meaning that we're going to be able to navigate back and forth within the result set from SQL text. Now if we look at SQL text, we'll see that it is defined as select from customer where the where clause that we passed in from what the user's parameters were and then we're ordering by store num. Then we're opening that cursor, and you'll recall that that executes the prepared statement. And we're going to call fetch cust, and we're passing a 1 to the fetch cust function. Let's take a look at what the fetch cust function does. It takes as a parameter a little flag of a 1 or negative 1. And we can see if it's passed in as, as a 1, we're going to do a fetch next. So here in this function, we're actually fetching the next row in the uh, result set, which is going to be the first one. And we're passing it to our program that's then going to display it. So here's our fetch next. Once we've fetched that row that we want, we're returning fetch OK. And if we followed this through, completely, we would see then that if it was returned the fetch OK, then we go ahead and call the display cust function, which simply displays what's in the master record to the form. So this fetch next into mrcustrec is supplying our master record with the row in the result set that we want to see. Now you can see if it's not a one that's passed in, we're going to fetch previous, and fetch previous simply gets the row previous relative to the position in of the cursor in the result set. So once we have fetched the row, we can see that there's also a place in our code that we have a function called fetch relative cust. And this is called when the user presses the next or previous uh, button or invokes the next or previous action. And fetch relative uh, calls fetch cust again, and here it passes the one or negative one, depending on which of the actions was called. If we go back over to our main and look at those actions, we can see that on action next is going to call fetch relative cust one, on action previous is going to call fetch relative cust negative one. So once the user has the result set confirmed, we're giving them the ability to go next and previous. Now we could also, of course, with those fetch clauses, allow them to go to an absolute row, an absolute position in the result set. We could also give them the ability to go first and last rows. Now let's take a look at what happens once we have finished with our fetch. 
So here in the query cust function, let's go back and look at that one. So we've gone ahead and we've called the cust select where we were actually declaring the cursor. Here's the cust select. And then we're calling the display cust if there was a row to look at. Now the last thing that happens is to close and free the resources associated with the cursor. So in the main, you'll see here, before we close the window and disconnect from the database, there's a cleanup routine. And the cleanup function over in Cust Query uh, simply closes the cursor and frees the cursor. So remember, close, frees the resources associated with the result set, and free releases the resources associated with the prepared statement itself. Now you'll often see these separated out if you need to close the cursor but you want to reuse it. You don't have to redeclare it if you open it again later on. But you do need to remember that these statements must be in the same module. So here our cleanup routine is in Cust Query, the same module where we declared open and fetch, but we are simply calling it from this function, calling it from our main at the end of the program so that we are closing and freeing the cursor uh, when we are done with it. So again, if we just execute the program, we went into the construct, the user provides their search criteria, that results in a result set of 13 rows, the user can navigate between them, and as we're pressing the next and previous, the action is triggering the code that is going and doing a fetch next or fetch previous, and then we're displaying that uh, what we have fetched into our master record, displaying that onto the form. Then when we quit, the cleanup routine is executed and the program is ended.